Hello everyone, my name is Charlie and I'm a volunteer at Free IT Athens. Today I would like to introduce you to LibreOffice Writer. This is a free software alternative to proprietary word processors. So if you've used Word or Pages, the, some of these things might feel a little familiar. They just look slightly different. I'm going to run through the basics of using LibreOffice Writer, which could be kind of boring if you watch it from beginning to end. So what I'm going to do is in the comment section below, I'm going to leave kind of like a table of contents. So you can look at keywords for what I'm showing you in the video and just click to find um, what you're interested in learning about. Or you can watch it all the way through. That's fine with me. So let's get started. To open up LibreOffice Writer on Lubuntu, and that's the operating system um, or version of GNU slash Linux we use at Free IT Athens, I'm going to click this blue button right here. Go to Office, and in this panel, I'm going to select LibreOffice Writer. Now that we have LibreOffice Writer open, don't be alarmed at the number of buttons and tabs on the screen. You'll get familiar with them the more you use the software. Up here, we have our drop-down menus. I'm going to show you a lot of things in toolbars and um, side panels that are also found up in the drop-down menus. That's really your preference and which you prefer to use. But one thing I do want to point out is the LibreOffice Help button. It's under Help if you click LibreOffice Help. Um, there's tons of information and you, it's searchable, so if I was looking up how to print, um, I can just type in print and they have lots of information. So even, you know, adding printers it has information on. Okay, close out of that. These toolbars have shortcuts for a lot of different things that we'll go over. Um, and there, uh, the great thing about LibreOffice is that if you hover over it, it'll give you a clue as to what it does. So this provides a strike through, um, this button saves, this one prints, and that sort of thing. On the side, we have some useful panels. So this is the properties panel, and you'll notice that these, these subheadings can collapse. So uh, you can click the plus or minus sign to collapse them depending on what you're using. And there's other pro uh, panels that you can open up. So the styles and formatting, this is some image panels, um, a useful navigator panel right here. I'm going to leave it on properties because that's easy. At the bottom here, we also have some useful things. So this gives you some stats down here about um, the document. So there's one page, no words or characters. This floppy icon turns red if you haven't saved. Um, and it's a great reminder to keep saving. This also lets you zoom in and out um, right here. Let's say you wanted to open a document that you you were working on, let's say the you know last week or yesterday. There's a really simple way to do that, and that's using this open document um, icon right here. You can click on it and go through folders, but I like to click this arrow, which gives you a drop down of your most recently used um, files and you can click on the one you're looking for and it opens right up. Now I'm not going to do anything with this document so there's several ways to close it. The easiest being just clicking this X button. If you're working on a document and want to open a new blank one just come up here and click this blue icon. It's the new icon and just click it and it opens a new one for you. It's very important to save your documents often. Um, in fact, when I have a new document or open up a new document, the first thing I like to do is save it with a name that I'll recognize and a place I'll be able to find it again. Um, this is because I'm a really disorganized person, so it's helpful if I just start well right off the bat. So you'll notice up here at the top, um, the document is called Untitled One, and that's because I haven't saved it yet. So. I'm going to click this floppy disk icon and that's going to allow me to save and of course you can use control s to save as well if you like keyboard shortcuts either way um, so in the save pop-up it lets you do a few things um, the first one is name the document so i'm going to call this one alice the next thing it lets you do is select where you want to save it so i'm going to save it in my documents folder because that's where i'll look for documents 
it gives you some choices here. You can save it to a particular format. Um, I just leave it on the default all formats. That is just fine. It also lets you save it with a password. So that'll let you password protect it if you have some important information on it. Um, I'm gonna leave it off for the purposes of this video though. And then click save. Now if I open up my um, folders here and go to documents, you can see Alice is saved right there. Now uh, LibreOffice is really good about telling you um, when you need to save. So let's say I change something real quick. I'm just gonna make a little modification. You'll notice as soon as I made a change that a little red dot appeared on the save um, icon and also down here um, this little floppy disk icon turned red so um, that lets you know that the document has been modified since the last time you saved and it might be a good idea to save again so you can do you can click this again to save like that um, or you can double click right here I'm gonna do another change to show you the third way you can save. There's actually a bunches of ways to bunches of ways to save. Um, you can do the Control S, and that saves it as well. Not everyone uses the same kind of word processor, so it's a good idea if you want to make sure your formatting is preserved when you're sharing files with people, especially people who are using proprietary software, that you s export your document to a PDF. And this is really easy to do. So I'm just gonna go up here and click this red export as a PDF button. And it lets me name my document just like the save pop-up did. So I'm gonna call it Alice PDF. And I'm gonna make sure that it's saved to the documents, um, documents folder and it is. So let's click the save button. And let's go in and take a look at it. So I'm gonna open up my folders, go to documents, and there's Alice PDF dot PDF. And this way, my um, formatting is preserved for whoever might open it up. There's several ways to select text in LibreOffice, and this is important for doing things like formatting. Um, let's say I want to turn th certain things green, like this title. One way I can select it is by clicking my mouse and holding it down and dragging it over the whole title. There we go. And now you'll notice the whole title is selected and I can change the color of the text now only to the portion that I've selected. You can select all the text. Let's say I want to make all the text kind of a, a dark gray. The, you can try to drag and hold down. This can be a little tedious. So a short way um, to select all the text would be to hold down the control key and then while well, you still have it held down, press the A key, and that selects everything in the document. So now I can come up to my font color and change it to a dark gray. LibreOffice Writer makes it really simple to find specific text. So let's say I want to look for every instance in this document um, where it says Alice. So I'm going to go up to the Edit dropdown and select Find. You can also do this by using um, Control F. So, oh look, it's almost like I've searched Alice before. <laughs> if I type in Alice in this box right here and hit the Enter button, it's gonna scroll through all the instances of Alice. Or you can use these keys, these buttons right here, the arrows up and down, to go through um, either the next Alice above or the next Alice below. You can also click the Find All to select them all. So now that I have all my Alice's selected, I can do stuff like I can bold them all or italics them all. Um, you can also replace um, certain text in documents. So I'm going to go up to Edit and select Find and Replace. So let's say I want to change all the instances of Alice to Jane. So I've typed it into the replace with, and now I'm gonna click replace all. And I'm gonna close out of this, and you can see here that all the places where it did say Alice, it's changed to Jane. 
Let's say you make a mistake and your cat walks across your keyboard. An easy way to fix this mistake is just to click the undo button. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click and I'm going to keep clicking until the mistake is gone. You also have a redo button. So let's say I clicked undo too far. I can redo and um, go back to how I want my text. Uh, another quick way to do this is to use control Z and that also um, functions as undo. Changing fonts is very simple. Um, there's several ways to do it. You can use this bar up here. I'm going to use the properties panel just because I find it more convenient. Um, to change a font, you just select what you want to change. I'm just going to click this title here and select the whole line. And using this drop down, it, um, I can see all the different fonts I have loaded on my computer and select the font I want to change Alice's Adventures in Wonderland 2. So I'm going to pick Free Mono. To change the font size, just select your text. And using this drop down, you can select the font size you like. So 44, we can make it bigger, or we can make it really teeny tiny up with 12. I like it bigger though, so I'm going to put it at uh, 36. There's several options for character formatting. So let's pick a line to play with. So I have this, this line selected. And over here in my properties characters panel, um, I'm just going to click through and show you what they do. So this B bold things. I'm going to turn that off. The I puts things in italic. The U underlines the, um, your text. And it also gives you some cool options. So you can do the typical underline, or you can do something more fun, like waves. That's what that looks like. I'm going to click it again to turn it off. Strike through puts a line through it. It's great if you're having like a digital to-do list, you can strike through something. And this A puts a shadow behind text. It's kind of hard to see with such tiny fonts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the title and show you what um, the shadow looks like there. So you can see there's a, there's a little shadow behind it. To change the color of text, just select what you would like to change. And using this drop down, Pick your color. So I'm going to pick like a free IT Athens green. And now the text has changed. You can also highlight text by selecting what you would like to highlight. So I would like to highlight that and clicking the highlight button. So that's added a yellow background behind the text. You can change the color of your highlighted text by using this drop down and picking a different color. So let's say I want a nice pastel purple lilac. I don't know what color that is. But that's how you that's how you change it. And you notice that the button saves whatever the last color you used. So if you want to use this um, purpley blue again, you don't have to change the color. You can just uh, you, you don't have to change the color in the drop down. You can just um, click the highlight button. In the paragraph section of your properties panel, there's several options for justifying text. So right now I have um, everything starting on the left, but if I wanted to, I could center things by clicking this button, or I could make them line up on the right. I'm going to leave the title centered. You can also justify text, and what this means, let me show you, it's easiest if I show you is that your text has a straight line. It lines up both on the left here and on the right. And this can look good. Sometimes you get these weird gaps that line up. They call those channels through your text. So be careful and look out for those channels. Sometimes it's better just to leave everything um, aligned left. What I have here are notes from an imaginary meeting, and what I'm going to show you is how to turn them into an outline and how to use the bullet list. What I'm going to do is turn this section into an outline. 
So I have selected the list that's going to be an outline and I'm going over here to the outline button and clicking it. Now you'll notice that all my items are on the same level. Um, I want them to be more tiered. So for example, printers, I want to be underneath um, kind of like a subheading to Wednesday's donation. So with my cursor anywhere on that line, I'm going to come down to this bottom panel and demote one level with subpoints. Here we go. Um, I don't want it to be the same as the level above it, so I'm going to turn it into lettering. It's going to be A. I'm going to do the same thing with these, except I'm going to go one extra level. Bump, bump. And um, let's change this level to um, lowercase letters. There we go. So under Wednesday's donation, right now we have printers and we have two subheadings for printers. So I'm going to take laptops and move them under one. I'm going to keep setting my items so they're where I want them. So outreach plan is kind of a new section, so I'm going to leave it as two. And digital is a subheading, and these three things fall under digital, so I'm going to click them to bump them over twice. Um, in person is another subheading. Handout flyers, there we go. And then I got two items under handout flyers. I'm going to go downtown in the east side. And then visit community centers falls under um, in person. So really quickly there, I have created um, an outline using this outline button and the demoting um, icons at the bottom. So you can also do something similar, but with bullets, this is really handy if your items are in no particular order, if the order doesn't matter. So for my shopping list for my imaginary event, um, I've highlighted my four items and I'm going over here to the bullet icon and I've clicked on it and now they all have bullets. You can um, have some fun and change up what kind of bullets. So arrows are good, I like, I like check marks. And that's my list. We can also change the spacing both between lines and between paragraphs. So let's say this is a poem I'm taking to a poetry reading and to make it easier for me to read, I'd like the lines to be more spaced out. So what I'm going to do is hold down the control key and while it's held down, I'm going to press the A key. That selects everything. Then I'm going to go up here to the toolbar at the top. And this icon is your line spacing icon. So I'm going to click the drop down and I'm going to click spacing two. So now you can see the lines are all much more spaced out. I can also change the space between paragraphs. Um, and if I click this icon right here, it's going to show me the non printing characters. That means things like the space bar, um, the enter key all shows up. So you can see those little dots, that's a space right there, a uh, space in a parentheses, and the little paragraph symbols are when I hit the enter key. This little arrow right here is actually what we call a non-breaking um, space. And what that means is even though it looks like I hit the enter key, what I actually did is hold down shift and hit the enter key. I can even show you how I did that. So let's say this is the line. I'm going to hold down the shift key and press enter. And this is what it looks like if I just hit enter. See, there's a bigger break and now it has the paragraph mark. The non-breaking space, what it means is to the computer, this paragraph doesn't end until here. So this doesn't count as the end of the paragraph, neither does this one or this one. And that's really handy because what I can do is even though these lines are broken up, I can add more space um, in between the paragraphs. So let's select all our text again. And I'm going to go to this area right here. And um, this lets you choose spacing for above and spacing for below. So let's put a 0.5 in for for below. Oh, that's three. 0.5 didn't work. <laughs> 
that's a way, way, way too much space. So let me go to zero and then let's do 25. So that is a quarter of an inch. And let me show you what that did. So now I have very clear breaks in between the paragraphs. And you can do the same thing um, above the paragraphs. So, oops, got a little weird there. Let's refresh it, there we go. Um, so I can come up here and add space above or I can take away space above. So I've covered a lot of material in one video and I've really only scratched the surface. I thought what I'd do next is cover some more projecty things like how to format a business letter or putting together a resume, um, but I really wanna make videos that people will find useful. So if there's something you're curious about, uh, especially about LibreOffice, but even with other free software alternatives, please leave a comment below and I'll put something together for you. Thanks for watching. Um, you can learn more about Free IT Athens at freeitathens.org. I'll see you next time.